one one, ether two, one two, and so on and so on. So it's just a good ECMP setup that we will start on. Then lastly, our IP routes. So when you go out of 50.1, it's for your 1.1, one, one, 60.1 one for your ISP2, 70.1 for your ISP3, and then your um, ECMP route. Okay, so this is your ECMP route. Then lastly, uh, in the basics is your DHCP on port number four. Okay, so we just set up triple one. So smooth triple one, so that we could um, start and continue our learning. Okay, so we will force a destination address to route out of a specific ISP. Okay, so okay, so we will choose uh, any public IPs, preferably the uh, pingable DNS that we will be using to determine the status of our ISP. Okay, we will assign for ISP1, ISP2, and ISP3. And then, if ever it's not pingable, um, that will say the status of the ISP is down. Okay, there, uh, I will use it on routes and mangel. Okay, so these are my three chosen IPs. <coughs> okay, I ping uh, three DNS, so uh, I think by now I forgot what's the, what, are, what those public IPs are for, but I am sure that they are DNS, and I, I assign them for each of the ISP to be the monitor. So 49 for ISP1, 124 for ISP2, and 121 for ISP3 monitor. So basically, it's all pingable. So why do I prepare DNS? Because um, they are the ones always readily available and always uh, pingable. Okay, so those are the three IPs. Okay, for the routes, I will force it via this one. Okay, when the destination is 49.151.178, it will go out of ISP1's gateway. So this is the universal one. 124 ISP2 gateway, 121 ISP3 gateway. Okay, when we see it on my laboratory, which is 50, 60, and 70, when you will go for 49, you will go out of 50. When you go for 121, you will go out of 70, because that's ISP3, and 124 for ISP2 monitor, you should go out of 60. So now I force those IPs to go out of those three uh, different ISPs using static route. Okay, so aside from that, I will also use Mangel. Okay, what's the rule for Mangel? <coughs> okay, when it says it's going, it's going out of the router, destination is 49.151, it will create a new connection mark. 1-1 one, one check, and then at the pre-routing, when you see connection mark 1-1 one, one check, uh, it will have a uh, routing mark to 1-1. One, one. So relatively, each public IP will have a routing mark, 1-2-1 to 1-3, 1-2-4 to 1-3, or to 1-2. So when you go out of uh, Mangel, these are the rules. So I show specifically the rules of the Magal, so you could try it on your own after this session. Okay. <clears throat> so connection mark, routing mark, this always goes on pair. Okay. What's the problem on this setup? So on recursive routing, we could see this problem. Okay, despite having the route and Magal, uh, that we force it to go out by a route, we force it to go out by a mangle, um, routes will be disabled whenever the gateway is unreachable. Giving the chance for the router to ping the monitor IP sa iba pang ISP. Okay, meaning, yung 49, it could be pinged by a ISP2, by a ISP3. Okay, how to show it? Let's have this scenario number one. Okay, let's say, your ISP1 is down, so your 50.0 is down. So in your routes, you can see it's, it's an 
reachable. Unreachable. And when you try to ping 49, that's supposed to be goes goes only out for ISP1, it's still pingable despite being disabled. Okay, this is the loophole. Uh, you could still ping the IP despite forcing it to route out because of um, the ECMP route and then the failover routes. Okay, when we go for ISP2, ISP let's see the scenario. ISP2 monitor is down, force route is disabled, and force, uh, route for Mangle is also disabled. That's why it could go out of other ISP. So 124 is assigned to only go out of one of ISP2, but despite having the Mangle in the route, because it's being disabled whenever the ISP is unplugged, you will be able to ping it using another ISP. Recursive routing is usable, useful for two ISPs, but if you have more than two, this will be the scenario. Okay, scenario number three. Same, same scenario. Um, you could ping the monitor IP using other ISPs. Okay. So what will be the solution? The solution is to ensure that the, the destination address will go out of the assigned specific route. So how to do it? So to avoid monitor IPs of being pinged on through other ISP, we will use firewall filter. Okay. This is the first part of the firewall filter. When, uh, when, you, when the destination is 49.151.178, uh, going out of uh, port number two, which is ISP2, action is to drop it. When it goes of ISP3, action is to drop it. Same thing as your 124, when it goes out of ISP1, drop it. When you go out of ISP2, ISP3, drop it. And the 121, which is assigned for number, uh, your ISP3, when it goes up ISP1, drop it. ISP2, drop it. <coughs> Okay, so drop monitoring. Okay, so let's have this one. These are all the rules that, are, that we created on our firewall filter. Okay, so you have six rules, two, two per uh, public IP. <laughs> okay, now we are assured that whenever 49 is unpingable, ISP1 is down. Whenever 124 is unpingable, ISP2 is down. Whenever 121 is unpingable, ISP is, ISP3 is down. Okay. So this one is for 124, and then we'll skip on this last one for 121. <clears throat> okay. So now the results. Whenever you try to ping 49, even though ISP1 monitor is down, you cannot ping 49 anymore. Okay, because of the firewall filter. Okay, same thing as your 124. When you try to ping it, and it tries to go out of ISP3, it will be dropped despite uh, having your monitor IP unreachable, you could still not ping 124. Okay, this is the last one. <clears throat> 121 is unpingable when ISP3 is down. Okay, now we know the status. Well, we, uh, if ever the IS IP is pingable, it's up. IP is not pingable, it's down. Okay, we should set up the router email. Okay, set up the router email is basic. Um, you just need to fill this up. Okay, show you the, yeah. the server, the server for it, um, the TLS if you need one, then the um, prom address, then the username and the password. So once you have set up 
this one on your router, um, your router could send email. And what is the email or what is the body of the email that you should send? Okay. So we should need a trigger for emails. Okay. Let's have this one. Auto email. <clears throat> so now that we have assured this 49, when you cannot ping 49.151, ISP1 is down. We can do, when you cannot ping ISP2, which is 124, ISP2 is down, 121, then ISP3 is down, we could now assign them as your triggers. Okay. We will use <coughs> Netwatch. Okay, so these are the three Netwatch that we have created. Okay, what's inside each Netwatch? So auto email setup is one for ISP1. Okay. Time uh, interval is just for 30 seconds, 50 seconds. Um, the uh, interference on how fast your ISP should be checked or the public IP should be checked. Okay. So it says that on up, it will send an email to gmail.com, which is my personal email. Their subject is ISP1 is now up. Body ISP1 on either one is now restored from the router, or you could assign any email. When down, okay, it will automatically email to automatically email to ASAPLORLISA that ISP1 is down. Okay. So the second email for 124, when you could not ping 124, this is your, this is your netwatch on up. To send email to ASAPLORLISA that the ISP2 is up. And when down, ISP2 is down. So it's, it's, it's now going to be useful. Okay, for ISP3, for up, same. Okay, what will be the configuration benefits? Okay, configuration benefits is the following, are the following. Know when the ISP goes down and when it's restored. Router will report by email. It means even you're on vacation or away, or for example, if we're having MUM, I could receive an email if our ISP goes down or if one of the ISP goes down. <laughs> okay, is of mind that you don't need to manually check your ISPs especially if you have multiple ISP deployed. Okay, at the same time, um, this is use, useful for uh, modem routers or directly public IP or even triple PoE. Well, uh, th there will be no problem. Okay, lastly, ensuring configuration will work even if the modem router is down or the ISP link disconnection or any forms of uh, internet source problem. Okay, <clears throat> lastly is to thank you. If you have any, any other questions, um, you could go to our booth for this particular setup. And it's also, we also have a, prepared a board where you could see the setup, uh, the actual setup. And then, yeah, the question and answer. And, okay, my contact details. Okay, so, I hope you have learned something and it will be useful on your side for this topic, um, multiple one with automatic email when I, for the ISP status. Okay, so that's the end. Thank you.